My name is John Weymouth with MediSurge, and what we're presenting today is a surgical setup of the Alcon Constellation. We're going to cover powering the system on, setting up the different consumables, and going over a little bit of troubleshooting, the things that can go wrong. We'll also review to make sure that you have the correct doctor selected, and if you need to make parameter changes, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on. But right now, we just want to get you through a complete setup of the system. So the first thing we're going to do is plug the machine in. And we have our power cord to plug into the back into a 110-volt outlet. And then the next thing is we make sure the main power switch is on and press and hold the power on button. Now it's going to go through a power-up sequence, and um, during this time, it's going to check each of the functions of the unit to make sure that the fluidics module is working, the ultrasonic, the pneumatics module, all of those systems, it's checking to make sure they're operational. And while it's powering up here, this is the ultrasonics module. This is where we plug in our fragmentation handpiece, and we also plug in our Baco handpiece. And this is for our diathermy. And then this module is called the pneumatics module. And it has the vitrectomy that plugs in, scissors, forceps. And then we have a, a viscous fluid system. And then we also have the gas. So it automatically fill a syringe for us. That's built in. This is our fluidics module. And it has a chamber measuring device on the right to make sure that the fluid is present. And then there's a vacuum measuring chamber on the left. So when we plug the cassette in, there's actually things that read those chambers. And then we have our tabletop light source. Then we have our auxiliary light source and our laser. Our laser has a key switch on it. So when you turn that on, it goes through its own startup sequence. So the machine is starting. And actually, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner there, there's a little pie-shaped uh, segment. And as it goes through each of the different segments, it'll change that particular mode. So now it's started up, it's powered up, and notice all these are grayed out, give it a second. So it's gone through and it's initialized. This motor turns slightly, so it does a lot of testing as you're starting it up to make sure everything is working properly. So our laser is just getting fired up here. So now we've got the machine pretty much ready to go. First thing we want to do is make sure that we have our correct doctor selected. So we can do that, and then we close that out. And then here's our doctor located at the top. We have our foot pedal icon so that when we push the different buttons, you can actually see those arrows and indications pointing out that the foot pedal is working properly. And then going across the top of the screen, we have options. The options show you that uh, you can change the settings just for the doctor or for the complete system. And then it has some maintenance buttons, some extras, and then we have a view, copy, delete, where we can actually take information from the machine and put it on an SD card. And we'll go over in more detail all of these functions and features, but right now what you want to be able to do is make sure you want to select your doctor. You just touch this button, select the doctor on your screen, and then just press, and now our system is set up for the doctor. And if you'll notice, a little gray circle appeared in this corner. That is set up for the flow control mode. Not all systems have that set up, so that if you didn't want that particular function, you can make it not appear. So one of the big problems we have with feedback from our customers is that they have a problem with the flow control. And that is a feature that you can turn on and off. But we're going to set it up so that it is working for us today. And we'll go into detail on how to set up each of the different doctor settings in a, in a different video. Right now, we just want to show you how to set everything up for surgery. So we've got this all ready to go. Now let's do our first step, which is putting or getting our tray arm around here. Now I'm surgically scrubbed up, but of course I have no mask. We're just doing this to make it look a little bit more interesting and realistic. But this tray arm operates. It has a control here. 
that lets you flip the table, squeeze the handle, and now you can move it in all directions. And typically you want this tray height set up to be just about at the bottom third of this fluidics module here. The reason is for this slow control to work, this has to be at the correct height. So I'm going to have my assistant here. What we're going to do is set up the machine for surgery. And first thing we need is our cassette. So he'll open that up for me. We'll take our items out, put those on our back table here. And we've got all our accessories. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to take and cover our tray arm here. We have a couple of bales here that you can do it. And there's a variety of tray arms. Some that will cover the complete arm totally. But for our training purposes here today, we're just going to keep this one. Then we have our cassette. Then we have our tubing for spiking the bottle. We have our fiber optic for the light source. We have a syringe and setup. This is for the FACO system. And then we also have our vitrectomy. So to get this unit set up, we've got it plugged into air. And if you notice on the screen here, it tells you what the air pressure is. If it falls below too low, the settings, it'll actually give you a warning. And if you're curious as to what the different uh, settings are, you can push this button and it'll show you the color and the numbers that are associated with the different pressure ranges. This can work all the way down to 58 PSI pressure, which is pretty low. You're not going to have the optimal features and settings, but you still can get through surgery. And the max is 120. Anything over that, it's going to react and give you some feedback saying the pressure is too high. So you typically run it around 100 PSI would be the great range. So to set the machine up, first thing we're going to do is put our cassette in. And there's a little marks across there that gives you the idea you can open that up. The cassette comes with its own collection bag attached. If it's not attached, you can attach them very easily. They just unclip and it unplugs. You put a new one on, you simply press it on and then hang it on to the two captures here. So this cassette is set up for just vitrectomy. And if I place it in here, align it, it grabs it, takes it in, and holds it. And it's going through. It's actually testing the cassette. So the beautiful thing about these units is that it tests every step that you're doing to make sure everything is set, set up properly. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to spike our bottle. So here we have our connections for the system. And everything is color coded. So the gray is going to be the air pressure into the bottle. The red is going to be the fluid coming back. We have our little protective cap. And this is not the sterile way of doing it, but the sterile way would have we pass this off. They would spike the bottle, turn it, pinch this off, squeeze it till you get about half, three quarters full. And then we'll hang this on the side of the unit over here. We have a hanger here, and we simply hang the bottle on there. And the bottle will be pressurized through this line, and you'll see air bubbles that will go in there. And then we'll have our fluid coming down the red line. The next thing we want to hook up is our vitrectomy handpiece. And the vitrectomy handpiece, it tells you 20K, meaning that is the uh, cuts per minute. We have three connections, a black, a gray, and a blue. 
So on our pneumatics module, we have our gray one in here. And if I were to plug this into the wrong one, notice that it turns amber. When it's in the right connection, it'll turn green. And then our other fitting here, this is for the suction. And it simply goes in the front of the unit, rotate, and that locks in place. There is also a screen cover that you can use to put over top of the system. And this is designed so that you can touch the screen and still be sterile. But for our video purposes, we're not going to use that right now. The next line we have here, the next line is for the infusion. So we have our white is for the air and the dark green is for the fluid. And these go in with just a quarter turn and they lock into place. The next thing we're going to do is put our cannula and this is designed to put fluid into the eye and it's they come in different gauges and the way you can tell the gauge is on the side of the cassette box that it came in and it will tell you exactly what gauge it is so now we have our cannula we place that into there and this has a mechanical on off so if you want to stop the fluid at any time you can do that it has a special valve here so that when air pressure is turned on it automatically shuts the fluidics off so that is our small cannula that will be placed in the eye the next thing that we have is our extrusion or auxiliary vacuum line it has a light blue it plugs in here and then this is used to connect to another cannula for anything that they have that they want suction that is not vitrectomy suction so the next thing we want to do after we have everything basically set up for the fluidics is that we want to prime it and the way we do that is very straightforward there's just a button on the top of the screen that says start prime so I have all my connections I have my bag I have my bottle spiked I have my vitrectomy handpiece in place and I've got my extrusion line so all the basics are all set up so when I touch the start prime the first thing that it does it's going to start pulling fluid into the cassette it'll fill these two chambers up each of these chambers are filling up with fluid and there this is where the fluid that goes into the eye originates from so it pulls it from the bottle stores it in here and it'll just empty one chamber and then start the second one and refill the other one so it goes back and forth so there's always a reserve built in for the unit so now what the system is doing is going through and it's filling all the lines with fluid the vitrectomy vacuum line is being filled and what's kind of interesting it knows how long the lines are so it pushes just enough fluid through to, to top them off the next thing it's going to do it's going to go through a calibration of this particular cannula and when it finds that it's working properly so now we're in the calibration mode and what it's doing it's putting pressure fluid pressure and it's actually measuring the fluid flow so there's an indicator there that tells you how many cc's per minute are being pushed through that cannula and if it's the right cannula then the machine will recognize the flow versus pressure and then it'll say that it's passed and here it passed if we have the wrong cannula on here it's going to fail or if I move the lines around while I'm setting it up or it's going through that calibration it will fail so the best thing to do is when you start that if you're using the flow control is not to touch anything so now it's testing the vitrectomy handpiece you can hear that vibrating 
So now we're totally set up and ready for surgery. The only thing you have to do now is the doctor can select all these functions or we can do it by touching. We have our vacuum, our cutting rate, and to do surgery, you have to turn this button on. Now that the IOP pressure is on, our cannula is activated, I can shut this off, but everything is now ready to go for surgery. And the fact that it tested itself, we know that everything is working. So if you have any questions on troubleshooting or if you have some issues, then the, for the fluidics portion of this, don't hesitate to call us. And after the fluidics is tested, if the doctor is going to want a light pipe or light source, we have this particular cable. It has a protective cap on it. And all you simply do is plug it into the connector. And when that's plugged in, it recognizes it, and the light source is ready to go. We can power on our light source here. So now we have light coming out of the light pipe. So that is the complete setup of the system. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call us. We'd be happy to help you and walk through any issues. So look forward to our next set of tapes that go through all the troubleshooting issues during setup and how you can counteract those. Thank you.